Friday traders. This is Blake Morrow. You were listening to the Morning Edge webinar, and I want to welcome you all back. Okay, you know, just a couple of comments that came in, um, you know, regarding you know, what we were going over this morning. Kevin says that helps a lot, Blake. I think one of the most difficult things as a trader is not, ta is not taking a trade, but rather managing the trade and being able to shift our bias based on new information. And um, that th it's, that's really true. I mean, you know, Ke <laughs> it, wouldn't it be nice when, when in a perfect world that we go, oh, you know, I'm buying the dollar. Why am I buying the dollar? Real simple then you buy it and then it just all works out but realistically you know <laughs> you know things things uh things um uh you know tend to shift and change and dynamics change and you've got to really you know be able to you know keep a fluid uh outlook but also hanging on to an overall arching theme i think that's the you know that's the toughest thing for most people is to say okay you know like like for me i like like I have a couple overarching themes in the market that 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 you can't you, you can't bend right now. Okay, one of them being that the the monetary policy divergence between the Fed and other central banks is um, uh, very clear, and um, and it, you know it's very clear and it's very it, it it's it's like. Um, it's very clear and when it's clear like that you have to keep that as an overarching theme um, you know in in the back of your head when you're trading at all times okay and that you know that that's what obviously keeps me uh, a continued dollar bull you know so if you know it, what what the whole reason why I haven't swayed looking at you know and then you obviously have the technical backdrop behind it too, but the whole reason why I haven't swayed being long dollars because until that changes, I I, I have to stay um, bullish the dollar. Same thing with like the, the Swissy. So there's an overarching theme of me being bullish the dollar. There's a more overarching theme, me being bullish the dollar Swiss with, with, not only policy divergence, but mega divergence when you have, you know, the Swiss National Bank at negative interest rates, you know, so that that's like even, you know, it, it even more of a strong bias to be long the dollar Swiss. Now, obviously, you have to take into account, um, you know, risk that emerge from Europe and, and, and risk aversion that, that could possibly put a, you know, near term uh, damper on what you're trying to do. But if, if like, let's say, like, let's just say, um, I'm just throwing this out there and then we're going to get started with our analysis. I just wanted to cover this for a second. So let's say, uh, 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 Greece comes back into the spotlight, which it's more than likely going to do here in the next, you know, within the next six months, whether it's a month from now or a week from now or six months from now, you know, Greece is coming back in the spotlight. So when it does, um, that's obviously going to strengthen the Swiss franc. You're going to see, um, you know, whatever the, the news is, it's going to inst instill a little panic into the, 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 the Swiss franc. Probably you'll get some rushing into Swiss francs. And, um, you know, the dollar Swiss may drop pretty aggressively, you know. And, but knowing that the market is better prepared for Greece than it was, you know, four years ago or three years ago, um, that panic will dissipate. And when it does, you have to be ready to step back in. To the dollar Swiss and be be back to being on the long side, okay. So those again, that's the overarching thing that you got to think about when you're trading the markets, and you have to navigate around the short-term ideas that may disrupt the intraday or you know couple-day market dynamics. And I think if you can do that, um, you know, it's it, it 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 will help you out tremendously. Now, obviously. Um, you know, timing is where, you know, that's why we look at, at, at charts and look at, you know, the daily and four hour charts to try to get a better handle on timing. And we're not always going to be perfect, of course, but finding, um, finding that theme is, is the overarching, you know, true driver of the market is so vitally important. Um, and you can trade against it, obviously, but, you know, trying to stay in line with the overarching theme of the market is going to be the path of least resistance 
okay and I and I and I hope and I hope you know what we do here every day helps as a result okay let's talk about let's go to the euro so um, so the euro dollar as you know has rallied back to 110.25. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was the resistance we wrote on the bias chart. We wrote down 110 and 110.25, right? Yesterday. So we stopped at 110. That contained us yesterday morning or yesterday afternoon, evening, whatever. Then we got to 110.25 in Europe, and that contained us there, correct? Good. Okay, so now. Can we break 110.25? Yeah, we can. We're 15 pips away, and we get some weak data today, and we're going right through it. Uh, you know, very realistic. Very realistic. Okay. Now let's also take a look here, and I'm going to have to delete some stuff just because it's charts are getting a little messy at this point. Um, you know, let's let's do that. Let's get rid of this one. Okay. Let's get rid of this one for a second. Okay, let's let's keep it at, at what we got here. All right, so re remember this yellow trend line right here. That's the most important. Ultimately, this is what, what's going to completely shift my my attitude with the dollar. So if we get back above that yellow trend line. You know, if we have this, um, you know, this flag pattern that's trying to play out, we get back above that yellow trend line. I think I said it yesterday. If we get back above like 111 or so, that's really going to change my thinking on the dollar. Um, but what I'd like to see today is I'd really like to see the data come in stronger to give the dollar a, a boost, and um, you know, we, you know, some some stronger inflation data will give uh, traders good reason to, you know, to 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 you know, look for dollar longs. I think today, we've had a nice pullback. Um, if you take the uh, pre FOMC high to the lows, we've hit the 618 retracement. Okay, so and that is also the you know the previous resistance, which comes in at 110.25. All right. Now, if we continue higher, if we continue higher. There's a good chance that we can, you know, test the upper end of this like channel. It's an hourly channel. I just go ahead and extend it on out. All right, and that could take us to 110.50. All right, so I'm going to write down both of those levels: 110.25, 110.50. Okay. The bias. I know we've been retracing the last couple of days, or the last, you know. 36 hours or whatever, um, but the trend remains bearish as long as we're below that yellow trend line. Okay, um, let's uh, let's um, take a look at support. So support today. If this channel uh, that you see here, and I, I here let me let me let me remove that. I think that's appropriate. Okay. That channel's strong, significant. That means we have to hold above 109. I, I had it at 109.80 earlier this morning, but we're just kind of bouncing around. So 109.80 is support. Okay. If we take out 1.09980, that's. I think that's your cue. Okay. So let's let's talk about this for a second this morning. So let's say. Let's say uh, in 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 an hour's time from now, okay, we get a um, we get a core PCE um, inflation. Uh, I mean, um, personal income, personal spending. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's Friday. I was yawning on Fridays for you know because I'm tired. Okay, but um, let's say we get some you know uh, stronger wage growth. Um, employment cost index is moving up. Um, so it's you know costing more for our employers to employ people, um, you know. So that inflation you know gauges are starting to tick higher a little bit. Let's say the euro drops below this 109.80. If you're not short the uh, the euro and you're like, okay, I'm going to wait for the data, which I think is is actually the smarter decision if you're looking to just establish a position today. Um, then if we break through here, then you put your stops above here and then you target you know somewhere down. You know, somewhere down here. OK. 
Mexico over the next couple of days. I think that's that's a good you know setup. But we really need to get we need to clear 109.80 in order for the uh, for the euro to start you know backtracking some of this move that we've seen the last couple of days. Okay, let's go over to um, let's go over to the cable. So the cable. What did we write down for resistance yesterday on the pen, on the um, um, uh, what is the uh, what was the resistance we wrote down in the cable yesterday? I, I can't remember. One fifty three ten. Okay, so one fifty three ten, and then um, I think we said there's a possibility we can get to one fifty three fifty. One fifty three fifty is the underside of this trend line. You notice. So here's your here's your trend line here. We're here. I mean, we're, we're literally here. So the cable should um, stall here. But let's do this really quick, okay? Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't, you know, we have the potential to really start squeezing here in the cable. It's a damn pound. I really um, dislike the, the pound, <laughs> as you guys know. Um, it, it, it's like I, I'm, I'm, I'm in it, and I'm like, why am I even trading this damn thing? I hate it so much. Anyway, uh, a break above, I, I, you know, if I go back the last uh, 13 or 14 years that I've been trading FX, you know, we, in, a, in the United States, we, we've only been allowed to trade the currency market since 2001 wasn't available for retail investors prior to 2001. Um, and that's when I made the switch from equities to trading currencies predominantly, it was 2002. So if I go back like the last 13 years and I go back and, and see like my overall performance in, you know, in, 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 in the currency market without actually, you know, doing it and having the, you know, you know, a couple months to try to skim through all my data. I, 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 if I had to guess, I would say, you know, the Euro I've done really well with, you know, the Aussie and the Kiwi I've done really well with. Um, the Yen and the Pound are probably my, my weaker links of currencies to trade. You know, if I had to draw a conclusion or, you know, just try to make an assumption, I, I it, it, the Pound's such a pain in the ass. Anyway, um, okay, so resistance I think will be this 50% retracement to spike high. So if we get above 153.75, we should uh, we should break. It's taming the wild beast is what it comes to, down to, right? 53.75. I'm trying to tame this wild beast and it's, it's always, a, 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 always an attractive idea um, from a trading perspective. Like I want to tame the one that I can't, I can't rule and uh, that seems to be the one, the unruly one. Um, Al says, Blake, you're making me yawn too. I can't wait for the day to be over as well. Good day to you. See, you know, um, yawning, it is, it, 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 it is contagious. And I, I truly, truly believe that. And I'm sorry if I'm making you yawn. I really am. All right. Um, we're still, like, trying to develop this bearish trend, but, you know, Obviously, we can turn right back into a range after today. If we pop up through here, go right back into the range. All right, so support from current levels, I don't think will be 153 because I think if we push through 153, what it'll do is it'll stop anybody who's long out right now. Uh, so I think going through, you know, like the 153 level will do that. I, I think support will be right here at 152. 75 on the way back down. If we if if the dollar strengthens and we drop. That's where I think support's going to be. So 152, 70, 152, 75. Let's go over to the, the Swissy. George says Moby, British pound dick. That's right. <laughs> hey, there's a new movie about Moby Dick coming out. I don't know if I want to take my kids to see that. I, I, you know, if I take my kids to see that movie, um, they may never, ever want to go out on a ship again. So I don't know if I, holy shoot. Okay. Oh my God, that's so funny.
Okay, sorry guys. Uh, let's go over to the let's go over to the Swissy. I was looking at something and I, I got mesmerized by seeing this bouncing pumpkin flying down the street um, on CNBC. It was the craziest thing. It was a big blow up pumpkin, probably the size of about four cars, got loose in the wind. Apparently, pretty crazy. All right, so here's the Swissy. Um, so the Swissy. Uh, you know, still hovering close to the 99 cent level, came under a little bit of pressure. Uh, looks like a couple guys had reported. Um, hold on. Uh, Patrick says the Swiss National Bank reported a loss of 33.9 billion in the last nine months. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's pleasant as a uh, as a, uh, a a private institution, right? Wow. Okay. Anyway. So here's the Swissy. Uh, Swissy's pulled back, but keep in mind, we're still in breakout territory. You know, these dips down here are holding, and uh, one, or excuse me, 98.40, remember that was the resistance here? That is support. We're already trying to create a hammer, but really that's the support. 98.40 today. So 98.40, 98.40. Um, let's go over to the hourly. Sue, so, it's kind of like the euro dollar. You know, if the if the Swissy can break above um, 99.10, that that'll release the uh, Kraken. It'll release the Kraken. Release the Kraken. Uh, yeah, but uh, 99.10. Um, would be a nice breakout point. William, my email is b dot morrow. At wisetrade.com, B dot morrow, B dot morrow, B period morrow. Morrow with like tomorrow, not bone marrow. It's not marrow, it's morrow. Thank you. He's asking for my email. I asked if it changed. It is. It, it, they, we did get a, a dot put into it like a couple years ago, but. So if you haven't emailed me in a couple of years, that might be the reason why. 99.10 is resistance, and if we re if we break 99.10, then we can release the Kraken. Okay, so there's the Swissy. Let's go take a look at the dollar yen. So the dollar yen, what a wild night, huh? Um, I when I got up this morning, I said, I said, what the hell happened there? <laughs> you know, what what is that all about? Um, we so the BOJ obviously left rates unchanged. Then what Paul said, and, and I didn't read. I read. I was reading other research, and I saw he sent these out. And I usually will get to them, um, you know, a little bit later in the morning. What Paul had, Paul had written, he said, report of a Japan extra budget lifts risk appetite, sh uh, shores up U.S. dollar. BOJ stands pat. Wrong foot. Blah blah blah. Um, the dollar bounced against the yen on Friday as a report that Japan may unveil a supplementary budget lifted risk appetite and helped the greenback pair earlier losses. The dollar was up 0.1% at 121.24 120, yen. Um, and the currency had dipped as low as 120.29 after the BOJ kept rates unchanged, blah, blah, blah. So it was this budget that they announced that created this this wicked move and I was asleep obviously through the whole thing wicked move and then it came right back down and gave up all those uh, all those gains so you know I guess the 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 moral of the story is trade the fringes right because if you're gonna buy the dollar yen buy it now put stops below 120.10 and you know take a ride back up if you're gonna short the dollar yen short it up here at 121.50 or close to Put your stops above and write it back down to 121. That's the only way to play the dollar yen right now. You, you, you guys, you guys get don't get caught in the middle of this range. You get caught in the middle of this range. I'm gonna give you the I told you so, and I don't I don't like doing the I told you so. But if you get caught stuck in this middle of the range, I will say I told you so. All right. Even last night, I uh, I caught myself. I shorted the the dollar yen at like 120. 65 and it dropped down to like 50 or something like that and and it started bounced up and I made 10 pips I was in the chat room I'm like you know what I'm not gonna 
get caught in this range. It was last night before I went to bed, and I, you know, like I'm fortunate I got out of it because it ripped back up to 121.50. You know, after I went to bed, so I, I don't want to be caught in this range. I don't think you need to be caught in this range. 120.20, 121.50. How about that? 120.20, 121.50. It's a range trade it, trade it inside of it, or I mean on the fringes of it, and try not to get stuck, okay? All right, uh, let's go over to the, to the Canadian. So we got Canadian GDP, and Canadian GDP is actually expected to come down um, to 0.1% from a 0.3% read the last month. Um, let me double check my numbers here, just make sure I'm, I'm, I'm in line. Yeah, so 0.1%. Uh, oh, yeah, 0.1% is expectations, 0.3% was the last read. Um, the dollar Canadian, uh, to me, looks very range-bound. You know, we, 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 I'm, I'm still upset that I actually had an order to sell, and I missed it by one pip. Um, yesterday night, so... About 36 hours ago, I missed that. I missed that high tick because they hit the 786 retracement. I missed that high tick by literally a pip, and I'm upset that I didn't get out. Now, um, if if uh, if we make our way back up here, I'm probably going to get I'm probably going to get out of the Canadian and just be done with it for a while. Um, because I think that the dollar Canadian, if anything, is is somewhat range bound. Okay, so anyway, in, in the dollar Canadian may may still you know rally. I, I think a lot of it has to do with crude oil too, which crude oil's you know got a little bit of a, a kick to it. It's a little bit of a bid right now. Um, so 132 should be resistance. 131.10 uh, will be support for now. I, I think that's what we're dealing with, um, you know, if we make it back up to 132, I might scale out of my position. 130, 132 is 618 retracement as well. So 132, 131, 10, uh, just be careful with it. And we have, you know, obviously Canadian GDP coming up. So one, oops, I'm sorry. It's the wrong number, 131, 10. Okay. We are in a range. You know, I'm hoping for an eventual break higher. I mean, if for some reason, like, let's say, uh, let's say, I'm just going to throw this out there because I'm long the dollar Canadian right now. Let's say that the, uh, the um, and I'm up 42 pips currently, okay? Let's say the dollar Canadian GDP numbers come in at, um, like, flat, okay? So they, they miss slightly. And let's say the you know the wage uh, uh, like let's let's say personal income and spending tick higher and um, the e the employment cost index bounces back pretty good and we get some favorable U.S. data. I may hold on to the dollar Canadian at that at that stage in the game. So it really kind of depends on what the data gives us today, but um, that's what I'm thinking. All right, Kiwi. So this kiwi is frustratingly strong. It's so irritating to me. I've got a, I'm, I'm down 20 pips right now in my cost average, and you know, you know, obviously right here I was up 100, you know, or up 80 pips, and now I'm down 20. We stopped at a fib confluence. If you haven't seen it already, um, we stopped at a um, 618 retracement. 786 retracement, okay. We stopped on a dime there at, um, at you know, this uh, 6770, which means that that is, that's important resistance because if we break above that resistance, you, you break a double confluence like that, it's probably going to put us a lot higher, you know. We'll probably be testing 68 cents shortly thereafter. So um, 0.67. 
70 is uh, is key resistance today. We are still range bound. Uh, if the dollar you know stages a bit of a rally, this support comes back into play. She can just do that. I mean, for today, we'll you know we'll have to be aware of you know 67.10, but I mean we can take it all the way down to. Uh, I guess you know I'm going to write down 67 cents. 67 cents is going to be pretty good support. We get down there, you're going to get some buyers down there. Uh, I, and and by the way, Daryl yesterday. Um, Said you know with the uh, with the the the, the uh, news out of China about the uh, one-child policy uh, being relaxed, um, that could support uh, the New Zealand dollar moving forward with um, with uh, uh, you know uh, milk powder products, and uh, you know I I agree I think that that might be you know the tailwind that um, that the Kiwi has at the moment. But I think it's running on some of that, off of some of that data right now. Uh, I, I also read a, a earlier report about you know um, because the because prices have uh, um, have gone up for the consumer and because consumerism uh, you know China has been real diligent about trying to shift its demographics, if you will, to more of a middle class, prices are starting to get very expensive where uh, because of the Chinese culture and how um, how conservative they are as a society, generally speaking, you know, generationally, <coughs> that um, they may be reluctant to actually, you know, uh, have too many, you know, try, too, too many families to try to uh, to to uh, have more kids because of the costs associated with having another child. So that's something that I I, I and I, I I can relate to as an Asian and having uh, half Asian anyway, but having relatives that that are extremely extremely frugal um, that. You know, come from that 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 school of thought, Chinese school of thought. Anyway, some food for thought there. But you know, I think the kiwi is is uh, is rightfully um, being well bid because of that right now. Uh, is it sustainable? You know, near term, probably not. But that, I think that's what's uh, that's moving the market at the moment. All right, hey guys, I'll be back in a few moments. Uh, when I come back in about five minutes or so, we will continue on with uh, the Aussie dollar index, everything else. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. Um, all right, so we're going to go over to the Aussie. Let's uh, let's wrap up with the Aussie dollar here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Not wrap up with the Aussie dollar. Let's do the Aussie. Okay, so um, the Aussie found a lot of confluence down here. Um, which, you know, I, I still think about the Aussie and how it's really underperformed. I mean, if you look at like the euro, the euro's bounced back from 109 to 110, right? It's 100 some odd pips. Uh, the pound went from 152.50 to, you know, 152, 153.50. Uh, it's 100 pips. Aussie dollar. It's gone from uh, 7070 to 7107. Now they don't move tick for tick, obviously, but really the Aussie is underperforming because you can see it in the, you know, you can see it in the Euro Aussie, which has been, you know, creeping higher. Pa um, pound Aussie. Okay. Um, you can see that's been creeping higher too. So I think the Aussie, you know, Aussie New Zealand's come down. So um, the Aussie dollar is really looking not so hot, in my opinion. All right. Now, does that mean that it can't rally? No, but I really do. And, and just so you guys can see the confluence here. Okay, so 161% extension. I'm going to get rid of it. So because you, you guys know it's there. 618. Of the entire move, you know it's there. 
I'm going to remove it. Okay. But I think what's really important with the Aussie is if it breaks this support, it's toast. It really is really going to be, it's going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay. It's uh, resistance now. Well, resistance will be all the way up at 72 cents if we can even get up there. But we're having a hard time getting back up to 71, um, 7160. Okay. So 7160 is going to be resistance. Okay. 0 0.7160. And if we break below this 70, 60, the 70, 60, the 70, 60, 70, 70, we break below that. It's curtains, I tell you. It's curtains. So 70, 70 is support. Okay. Um, and we are in a range. Let's go over to the dollar index. So here's the dollar index, and uh, let's go look intraday. All right. So intraday, um, dollar has this is really ultimately very critical support. Okay, any which way you slice it, that comes in at 96.50. We have to hold that. Now you can see this is the FOMC. We've already given back so much of the FOMC move. Here, let's. Oops, that I didn't want to do. We're at a 618 retracement right now on that on that uh, on that dollar. Okay, um, that's ultimately going to be real key support resistance. Let's let's figure this out because this is kind of like the euro dollar, right? And we have to we have to get a, above 97.20 to take the downside pressure off. Uh, 97.20. And support is at. Um, Key supports at 96.50, and we're bullish right now. But we really have to hold these levels. We have to hold this breakout point in order for the dollar to continue to stay bullish here. Okay, it it has to happen. Um, I I know I talked a lot about it earlier, but I've got you know. You know, a lot more viewers that are listening in now that weren't listening in uh, earlier today. The dollar index, you can see, is right here. Okay, we are t retesting the breakout point. It's got to hold. If it doesn't today, and you know, and we we dip back below this red trend line, I am going to liquidate probably most of my dollar positions for now, except for the dollar Swiss. So I, I said that earlier. I just want to make sure that you know that a lot of the new listeners have heard heard that, because um, we have the risk of posting a false breakout now. All right, and that that means that today's data that comes out is really important. It has to be um, strong, or at least the 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 reaction to the to the data today has to be dollar bullish. You know, preferably we'd want supportive data to to accompany that. Obviously, um, you know Chad brought up a good point. He goes, even though you're dealing with, uh, even though we're dealing with month end today, could be a one-off than resumption of trend. It could be. Um, uh, uh, we, I was discussing with another trader yesterday uh, about uh, month end flows and where um, the 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 the, the thing about the uh, a lot of hedge funds, they might have marked up their positions yesterday and not today. Uh, and um, uh, some of the reports that that trader had read it, uh, would suggest that the, the markup day was yesterday, which would have been interesting, especially if we fall today. Um, uh, and, and and that was just you know it's speculation, but it was just something I that I, a conversation I had yesterday, ironically about month end. Um, but you are correct; that's something that 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 um, is you know to be thought about. But remember, we need supportive data. That that's all there is to it. The Fed made it very clear. Supportive data will support you know uh, stronger data will support a stronger dollar because it will suggest that the Fed's closer to raising rates. Without it, it's um, it can happen, right? All right. Okay. Um, let's go to the U.S. dollar, Mexican peso. 
Now the Mexican peso once again came off of that resistance um, uh, as expected. I mean, it, without any risk aversion, the peso is not going to go up. So uh, the dollar Mexican peso, 1670, 1633, that's the range. Don't get stuck at the at fringes of the range. Just know that a breakout is going to be coming soon. 16, what did I say? 1632, 1633, 1633, 16, 33, 16, 71, I think, but that's all right. You, you get the, the gist of it. Okay, there's the range. Um, you guys know that the US dollar Norwegian krona still, I mean, yeah, it's it's come off that resistance, but man, we're still, we're still, I mean, right up against resistance. I don't know if you want to be long the US dollar Norwegian krona, particularly right at the moment, but if we break 860, that's a big deal. Uh, now, if you want to trade the downside here, a break below 850, let's just call it 852, okay? So let's do that because you might be able to trade a nice uh, nice short here, 8.52 because that, that would be pretty important support. And this is obviously 8.6000 really important resistance and we're in a range but we're threatening to break out but here check it out if we break down why not short the Norwegian Krona and write it back into this uh, write it back into this range right short it here write it back into the range why not right yeah it makes sense makes sense to me um, but uh, but that has to be on weak U.S. data, obviously, because if it's strong data, we're going phew, right through here, okay? Uh, USR Swedish Krona, it's on my radar. The Norwegian Krona is definitely on my radar right now. Swedish Krona, this is surprising, actually. This is very surprising. Hold on real quick. I thought that might have been flagging, but I guess on the four-hour candles it is. On the on the uh, whoops on the uh, hourly it doesn't look as hot. You know, it looks like it's too far stretched. You know, so it doesn't look quite look like that on the hourly. But I guess I guess what I'm just trying to point out here is, man, that's pretty resilient at the moment. Um, let's delete that, delete this, delete that. Uh, and remember, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, let's, 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 let's talk about this for a second. The Sweden, the Riksbank ex extended quantitative easing, right? They did. I mean, is it really that unheard of if we just start breaking out to the upside. I mean, so 857.50, 840, let's do that. Eight, let's see, US dollar, Swedish krona, 840, 8.40, the support 8.5750 resistance. Because if the Norwegian krona breaks out, I think you gotta play the Swedish krona to the upside too. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Your bias chart is finito. Finished finito. It's done. Stick a fork in it. We have 15 minutes till data dump edge. So let me take some questions. All right. Um, Daryl says.